Hey there, music teacher friend. If you're like me, you've got a ton of resources that you have gathered over the years, whether it's physical books that you have like all over your shelves or, you know, game manipulatives that you've been using, all types of um, props and things that you use in voice lessons or piano lessons or the tons of digital downloads that you've made over the years. You have so much stuff. And yet a lot of that stuff is just not getting used. And so before you make that next purchase, I want you to ask yourself a question. What do I have that I could use right now? Now, I also want to say I am not saying do not buy things that, you know, are going to be useful to your business. Not at all. But what I am saying is let's start making the most out of the resources that you have already. What I'm going to do here today is I'm going to walk you through a four step process that I use to make sure that I am maximizing the resources that I already have and a way that I get organized for lessons that's super simple. So we're going to guide you through that four step process. I've also got like a really cool bonus tip at the end that will help you stay organized with those digital resources that you keep downloading because I know so welcome to the broadcast. If you are here, be sure to say hello. Let me know where you're tuning in from and let me know how many resources have you downloaded in the last month? Give me an approximate number. So let us know that you're here. Be sure to pop in and tell me where you're coming from and how many resources have you down downloaded in the last month? So the topic of the day is making the most out of those resources, and we're going to get to that in just one moment. I want to take a moment to say welcome to those of you who are new here. My name is Sarah Campbell. I am a business marketing and mindset coach for music studio owners and online education experts just like yourself. And I go live here every Wednesday where we talk about all those topics, where we talk about how we can show up as business owners and really embrace the business side of running a studio, where we talk about the marketing that we need to do in order to attract those clients that you love the most and the mindsets that we need to have in place so that we can do those things. And I love to talk about organization too. So that's the topic of the day. Good morning. Um, Carrie's tuning in from Florida. Hey, Katya, nice to see you. Good to see you. Um, okay, Craig says, I've downloaded probably 200 resources in the last month, or at least it feels like it. <laughs> oh my gosh. So um, yeah, that's a lot of resources. Even if it wasn't really 200, it probably feels like 200. So we're going to be talking about the ways that we make the most out of that. Um, I want to invite you today to join us in learning out loud. If you find a tip here that is particularly valuable to you, or if you hear a little nugget and you're like, ooh, yeah, that like is just mind blowing. Give us a hashtag takeaway and tell us what that is down below. It's a great way for other teachers to then see your takeaways if they had missed that particular item. And we just love to learn together. So, cause you know, teachers and that's what we do. So. Let's get to it. I do have the Savvy Sarah bot set up for you, and she is going to send you the show notes from today's broadcast, a little recap of all of the items that we're going through. So if you drop the word resources below, she will deliver that to you in Messenger. She will also give you the opportunity to opt in for Messenger notifications for next week. So give us a little resources down below, and you'll get set up with all those goodies. And let's get right to the good stuff today, shall we? All right. I'm fighting some fun light today. It snowed this week and it's like completely white outside and I've gotten paler as the winter goes on. So this this white balance exposure is just not going to work really well today. <laughs> we'll see if we can fix that. All right. Oh, hey there, Julia. I see you in the comments there too. Um, and Heather is tuning in from Atlanta. She said, she's sad to say that I've downloaded like about a dozen things already within 2021. Hey, no judgment, friend. You probably needed those things. So let me, let's make sure that you can implement them really well, shall we? Okay. Um, all right. Oh, before we get to tip number one, if you have a teacher friend that you would like to invite to these free broadcasts, then I invite you to pause for a second and make sure that they know about this, whether that's um, you know passing it on to them in Messenger or it's tagging them, um, or if you are part of a teacher organization that you think would benefit from this, you can like let them know about this right now and put that over on their page. So let's uh, spread the goodness. So if you take a moment to do that, that would be amazing and I would really appreciate that. All right, let's get to tip number one. Hey, tip number one, I need to get comfy. 
getting comfy here. All right, tip number one is to set your priorities. Now, you've downloaded a ton of stuff and it's all useful stuff, right? It's things that you need to run your lessons. It's, you know, it's books that you needed to, um, to educate yourself. And so you want to first identify what is your priority right now. So that means probably digging into, okay, what am I doing in quarter one of 2021? And let's like split this up into a couple areas. What am I doing in my studio? What do my students need? Identify that first. Second, what do I need as a business owner? Or what do I need as a music professional? Is there some continuing ed that you're doing or things that you've purchased in the past and you know you just haven't implemented them yet? And that's those two things are gonna tie together, right? So what you're doing in the studio is gonna be supported by what you are doing and educating yourself. So set your priority. Think about what do I really want to be doing over the next three months and sit down and jot down some ideas. That's your first step, right? We haven't even touched the resources yet. We're just thinking about what is it that I want to provide for my clients? What is it that I need to provide for myself? So we're identifying those goals first. That's step number one, set your priorities. If we don't do this step, then when we get to the other ones and we're like picking out resources, things don't quite jive together, right? You might end up having like, um, you know, a very disjointed theme going on in your studio, or you may not actually identify that there's like a really specific goal that you need to spend time with, and then you're missing out. So have a little date with yourself, grab your planner. I was going to grab mine, but I think it's on the kitchen table. Grab your planner and think about what are the things that I want to see happening in my studio. That's step number one. So if you guys have thought about that right now, I'd love you to like complete those steps as we go through the broadcast, right? Let's learn out loud. So what is your priority for your studio in quarter number one? Set that down below, share it with us here. What is the priority for you as an educator and as a business owner that may be separate from that um, priority for your clients? So think about those two items. When you have them in mind, share them with us here. And, ooh, okay, I'm, see, I'm seeing some good ones. Amy says, I want another piano teacher as an employee. Great, so now that you, you've identified that priority, as we start pulling the resources, you're gonna get a clearer picture about what you actually need, right? So that may mean that you're going to identify um, specific resources that you already have in your studio that you can use for that, or it may point to, okay, I need to seek out this resource or I need to seek out this individual who knows about this and it's going to help you get a little bit more organized. So that's our first step. Our next step, once we have set our priorita prioritize, <laughs> my priorities, is to find our materials and to think about what are the resources that I already have that will help me do this. So I'm going to give some examples. Um, so for instance, um, at the beginning of each year with my piano students, one of the things that I like to do is revisit uh, pentascales, scales, and chords, and to kind of review through each level, depending on the, the student, like what did we learn last year, um, and then how can we build on that? So in the first quarter, I tend to bring in more warm-ups that, um, that deal with those things and to then bring that conversation into the repertoire that we're working on. And so I, as a professional, sorry, this white balance is driving me bonkers. We're gonna try to fix this. This is like so weird. Okay, we're gonna see if that works. All right, so um, as a professional, I would sit down and I would search through my digital resources that I have organized in different folders. And if you haven't organized your digital resources, we're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, and I would identify like two or three resources that I would want to use. I would then pull those resources out of those folders and put them into a place that's really easy for me to access. Or it means going over to my, um, my shelves and pulling the books that I know that I'm going to be using in lessons. It's about gathering those materials and putting them in a place that's really easy to access. Ooh, okay, I'm seeing some more goals here. Um, Christy says that her first quarter goal is growth. Um, ooh, good, what does that growth look like, Christy? I'd love to more, know more of that. 
Um, Ella says her priority is to adjust her schedule to match her goals better. Mm, I like that one. That's a great goal. Um, and she, and Christy says she's going to be backing off some of the office work. Ooh, good. Laura is setting her priority, completing the advanced teacher training with the RCM. Fabulous. So you've identified those goals. Now that you've done that, make a list of the materials that you think you need. Okay. Some of those materials you may already have. They might be materials that you downloaded years ago and you totally forgot about. So do a search, <laughs> run a search on your computer and see what comes up. Um, so with once we make that list of all of the materials that we need, then it, we have to find those materials that's going over to your shelf. It's going into those drawers that you have that might be jumbled and messy. I'm talking about myself. Um, or, you know, it's doing a search on your computer and it's finding those materials and putting them in one easy to access place. Right. Then then we're going to move on to organizing the plan. So you've identified that goal. You've made a list of the things that you're going to need, the materials and other um, downloadables and resources. If, if you don't have one of those resources, you're going to seek out and find it. You've organized them into an easy place. Now you're going to sit down and think about organizing your plan. What order do these materials need to be used in? Um, how are you going to map this out over the first quarter? That might mean getting, you know, getting real with your calendar and kind of thinking about what are the dates that I need to consider if I'm going, if this is my plan, um, like marking those dates on the calendar. Uh, and I know that that can be something that like feels intimidating. <laughs> so I suggest using pencil <laughs> so that you can erase things and come back and like rework your plan. Um, or if you have one of those, I have, you guys can't see it, but it's off over to the side here. I have one of those big wall calendars that's like the entire year. And um, I like to use sticky notes. I have lots of sticky notes in different colors. I'll use sticky notes on the calendar at first as I'm mapping things out, and then I can kind of move them around as I go. So get real with organizing the plan. Spend some time with your calendar. Map out the order that things need to happen. So you've identified your goal. You've made a list of the resources that you're going to need, and then you started mapping out your plan and thinking about what does this need to, to um, what do we need in order to make this happen? Ooh, Kathy says her goal is to be more organized each day. Hey there, Don. Nice to see you. And yes, sticky notes are the best. I know that they're not the most high tech solution to problems, but I tell you what, I get a lot done with these guys. <laughs> so I'm not going to let go of this habit. If it works, use it. All right. So once we organize our plan, then we're going to move on to making implementation easy. And this kind of circles back to some things that I said in the second tip. It, you know, when we find our materials, we're going to pull those materials and put them into a place that's easily accessible. Um, and so make a, make a pile, make a beautiful pile or grab a basket. Grab some, you know, one of those magazine holders and put all of those resources that you need, the printable resources in one place and so that they're easy to access. Make them, I know most of us are still teaching online, put them within arm's reach so that you don't have to like get up from your piano. Put them in an easy to reach place every single day so that as you're teaching, you have those materials on hand. If it's a digital resource, then that might mean making a folder on your desktop that's just front and center so that you can find it like that. Um, put it into a place that's simple and easy to find. Uh, oh gosh, Amy says, I lose my sticky notes, so I've changed to a notebook that she keeps in her purse. Smart, there you go. Make it easy, right? Make it easy and accessible. This tip also ties into the plan that we've organized. So you wanna make implementation easy. And as you're making the most out of these resources, Make sure that you set aside some time each week to do that prep and to sit down with yourself and to think about what are the key things that I'm going to work on with my students this week. Make a list, right? Identify three things or keep it even simple. Just one thing, J-O-T, right? I was listening to a great broadcast by Heidi Day. She's a transformational coach. I was listening to that yesterday and um, one of her suggestions for a good morning routine was to identify J-O-T or just one thing. Write down just one thing that you're going to do. 
And if we sit through that process, if at the beginning of the week we can sit down with ourselves and we can make a plan as to what we're going to be doing with our clients, what we're going to be doing with ourselves, then we move that to a daily practice where in the morning we sit down and we write down that just one thing, that just one thing that we're going to accomplish that day. It's going to help you make that implementation even easier, right? So before I go back through these four points, I want you to think right now, come back to what you had talked about or the, the goal that you had set in mind for yourself for quarter one. I want you to stop and think for a second. And I want you to write down three resources that you think you already have that you can use that will help you with that goal. Think about those resources. Is it something that you've downloaded? Is it something that's sitting on your shelf? Is it something that you heard about and maybe you haven't gotten yet? Make a list of three things that are gonna help you make that goal happen, right? Now, we're gonna go through back through all of these points so that we can hit them real fast, but I wanna share a bonus tip with you because this is something that I started to do um, two and a half years ago, maybe three. And it's worked really well for me. And I use this as a way to make sure that as I purchase new resources with my studio and inside of my business, that I'm not just purchasing them and forgetting about them. Because we know there are so many downloadables, whether you're purchasing it or it's something that was free. Um, there's so much stuff and so much good content out there that it's really, really easy to download something or to purchase something and then it just like sits on your shelf and does nothing. And that's not useful. That's wasted money, right? It's wasted time. So here's the bonus tip. You're going to make this a consistent practice and here's how I've done it and I hope that this will be helpful for you. Um, I started doing something called the new resource folder and I would have this folder on my desktop and I would use it once a quarter, right? I, I, or I would say I would use it for an entire quarter of the year and then I would go back into those new, new resources and take it to the next step. So here's what it looks like. Make an empty folder, label, label it new resources. Anytime you download something, that download goes into that new resource folder. So it's front and center, top of mind, and you have it in a clear place and you can go to that place really quickly. That's where you're gonna find those resources and use them over the next three months. When it gets to the end of that quarter, my next step, and you set this, set this as a reminder, like get out your phone, set a reminder on your phone that says like organize new resource folder. You're gonna go into that folder and you're going to then take those things and organize them into the places that they need to be. So however you have your files structured on your computer, you know, organizing them in a way that you're gonna be able to find them later. Now, I know that might feel like a big project, but I'm telling you, it has helped so much over the past two years because before this, what I was doing is I was downloading the stuff, immediately sorting them into where they needed to go and then forgetting that I even downloaded them because maybe it was something that I wasn't going to implement that quarter and you know that resource then just kind of got lost on my computer. Or it was a book that I got and when I got the book, I immediately shelved it into where I thought it should be. Instead of having a, a pile of, okay, these are the new things that I've purchased recently and I need to spend time with. So making this a consistent practice and putting those new resources in places where you can find them and keep them top of mind is so important. So I would love to know right now, for those of you who are here, whether you're live with me or if you're watching this later on, what are some of your favorite resources that you've downloaded lately? Let's share. List one resource that you have either downloaded or purchased for your studio or your business and share that here um, so that other teachers can learn about what you're working on. I can't wait to see these resources. They're gonna be so good. All right. Before I get to the speedy recap, I do want to mention there are currently only five spots left for Branding Bootcamp. So if you have been in conversation with me about 
whether this course is right for your business right now, I'm going to be coming back to you and revisiting um, and revisiting your questions because I've got a bunch of conversations going on. And if you were thinking about joining us for Branding Bootcamp, now is the time to grab your seat because those five spots are going to go. And I also wanted to mention that there's one of the bonuses that was offered for this course. It's going to expire at the end of the week. There's a bonus that is 100 Canva templates. It's from Katya Verbanova. And it's like this awesome bonus that I'm offering to people who enroll by Friday. Um, after Friday, that is going to disappear. So if you were on the fence about this and you needed some information, please reach out and I will private message you and we can have a chat. Um, that aside, all right, let's do a speedy recap and talk about these resources. Are we ready? All right, how to get the most out of your music studio resources because you have so many things that you have purchased over the years and you know maybe you've forgotten about them and it's time to make the most out of your stuff and maximize the things, right? So let's get to four tips that will help you get the most out of those resources that you have put time and money into <laughs> and help you get organized. All right, let's get to them. Your, oh, wait, and show notes. If you want them, drop a resources below for those who missed that at the very beginning. Tip number one is to sit down and set your priorities and think about what are the things that I need to achieve with my clients this quarter? What are the things that I need to achieve with my business this quarter? And hey, let's expand this. What are the things I wanna do in my life this quarter, right? So we're hitting like, what do my clients need? What do I need as a business owner? And what do I need as a human being? So you can use this for all kinds of things. Set the priorities first, write down those goals. Your next step is to start identifying the materials that you're gonna to need to achieve that goal. So make a list of the things that you need. It might be making a list of the resources that you already know that you have, or it could be resources that you're like, mm, you know, I don't have this yet, but it's something that I do need to get a hold of. Make that list. Then you're gonna go physically find those materials, pull those books off the shelves, get those games out of the drawers, or pull those digital resources into one place, right? Then we're gonna organize the plan. Get friendly with your calendar, grab your sticky notes, grab your pens and pencils and highlighters, and sit down with your calendar and think about how am I gonna map this out? Like what is the first step that needs to happen? Put it on the calendar. What is the second step that needs to happen? Put it on the calendar and get intentional about organizing that plan so that when we get to step number four, implementation is gonna be easy right? Because you've identified your goals, you've made a list of resources, you've started to map them out on your calendar. You can make implementation even easier by making sure that those resources are top of mind. So organize them in a place that's easy to reach, that's easy to see, <laughs> and make sure that you get them into a place that's usable, right? If they're just hidden in all of these folders all over your computer, you're not going to use them. So put them into a place that's front and center. And the bonus tip, Make this a consistent practice. Try out that new resources folder for a month and see if it helps you implement and use those resources that you're constantly downloading. And then at the end of that quarter, right? Or at the end of the month, if you wanna do this on a monthly or quarterly basis, whatever works for you and your business, right? At the end of that time period, then you can organize that stuff then you can put that stuff into the folders that make sense, right? But spending time with those resources first and really getting to know them is going to be key. All right, I've seen some great resources that have been shared in the, um, in the chat. I'm gonna bring up some of those comments here. I see, um, okay, Amy says, is there a way to link two computers, my computer at home and, and at the studio. So Amy, there are so many ways that you could do this, so I won't um, try to go through all of them, but yes, there are ways that you can link the computer depending if you're PC or Mac, there are different ways that you can use cloud, you know, different types of cloud storage that you could then pull from. Um, there are some services that allow you to access a computer from another computer, so that's another way to do it. You could use something like Google Drive or Dropbox or any of those things, um, and maybe, oh yeah, see, Craig, <laughs> Craig said it, use Google Drive or Dropbox, that's great. Um, Ella said that she's reading Carrie Regan's book and Dana Lentini's book, awesome. 
Um, Don said she needed this today. She's working through some Valentine's Day resources um, from Kim Maloney at Teachers Pay Teachers. That's great. Oh, thank you, Christy. <laughs> hey, Christy says that if you're unsure about branding boot camp, don't be. Go for it. It's so good. <laughs> and right, there's five spots left. So I want to make sure that you have that spot. If you want to do this with me, it's time. Um, all right, great. I see um, Carrie's downloaded a lot of things from Music Notes. Beth has been using. Hey there, Beth. Look at your key. Is that a, what is in your profile picture there? Oh, cool. I love that picture. It's so pretty. Music Educator Resources. Um, Laura's takeaway is to make a new resource folder. Awesome. I love it. Okay, guys. This is Oh, she's already done. She's done it. She's she's done the resource folder. Excellent. Way to, way to take action, Laura. Fabulous stuff. All right. Well, I hope that you guys have found this useful. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, the best way that you can show that is to give me a little fireworks show right now with those hearts and thumbs up. And if you have a teacher friend that, who you could pass this along to, please take a moment to do that. Send them this broadcast so that they can get a hold of these tips too, because this is not a competition. They, I firmly believe, and you guys hear me say this, right? I firmly believe that there are enough music students in the world to fill every single music studio with ideal clients. So pass this information along to your teacher friends so that they can <sighs> breathe easier and use those studio resources that they've put together over the past year. Oh, you're so welcome there, um, Craig. I'm so glad that you found this useful, so glad. Thank you so much for joining me here today, guys. I will be back here next week on Wednesday where we will talk about more business, marketing, and mindset things. I've got a really great, um, I've got a really great broadcast plan for you guys. We're gonna be talking about the impact that branding has on our revenue. So we're going to be diving into the money things next week. So make sure that you drop a resources below so that you can get set up with the notifications for the Savvy Sarah bot and she'll make sure that she, you get a hold of that. <sighs> Thanks so much for being here, guys. My name is Sarah Campbell. I'm a business marketing and mindset coach for music studio owners and online education experts just like you. And you can find me here live every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern where we talk about all the good stuff. So I will be seeing you guys next week. In the meantime, stay savvy and stay you because you're a really amazing teacher. There is no other teacher in the world that is quite like you. And I think you're pretty dang awesome. So in the meantime, stay savvy, stay you. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining me. Bye. I can't find the button to end the broadcast. This is awkward. Bye, guys. <laughs>